Hey, Thomas. Hey, Bruce. Good morning, Lance. Hey, how are you doing? All right. How are you? Good, good. It's uh, it's good to be reconnecting, coming back up to speed. Uh, let's see, I'm just creating our meeting page. So I can share with you guys. How about you guys? How, how's the new year starting off? So far, so good. Good. All right, posting our meeting link there. I think we're already recording, yes. And I will share this. Yeah, okay. So uh, welcome everybody to the uh, Aries DidCom V2 Working Group uh, first meeting of 2023. Uh, today's January 9th. And it's good to be back uh, after we've been on a pretty long break since uh, the December 19th meeting, I think. And uh, yeah, so I think today you'll be some catch up uh, and we can have discussions and we'll just see where we go uh, as we all reconnect together. Hey, Rodo. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lance. Hey. And hmm, pronunciation on this. Uh, Mukahit, would you uh, like to introduce yourself? No worries if if you can't or don't want to. Um, also, now that I'm sharing, of course, my screen changed. So let me make sure I can see our chats. I'll post uh, again our meeting link in here. OK, uh, let's see. I also have to remind you of the antitrust policies uh, for Hyperledger and the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. Please be aware of those and feel free to add yourself to the uh, attendees list um, today if you'd like. And we'll go back into edit. Um, yeah, if anybody would like to do uh, introductions, uh, feel free to. Then we'll do some updates and yeah, basically just reconnect. So okay. Maybe, maybe I should say something. Sure. Yeah. Hi, this is Thomas um, from Red Hat. And I've been working with, with Aries for you know a couple of months, um, looking into connecting Apache Camel with, with Akapai. So this work has nicely come to an end, uh, at least from my end, uh, and it's ready to get integrated into the uh, compatibility test suite, AIP. Uh, and while doing so, I, I realized that the way to go, you know, at, for the foreseeable future would indeed be um, DITCOM, right? So I, I got interested in DITCOM, read up, uh, on the specs and stuff, um, what works and what doesn't work with Aries. Um, so, from at least you know from from our side, um, I'd like to work with you on the specs, and I'd like to, if possible, uh, use it come with you know the existing stuff over here in in Europe, the uh, EBSI stuff and and hopefully uh, work towards integration between uh, Akapai and you know the EBSI uh, infrastructure so 
at least this is on my roadmap for uh, 23. And this is my first meeting with you guys in this year. That's great. Great to have you. Can you tell us more about Apache Camel? Uh, yeah, so there has been there has been a demo uh, to some of the Aries folks. So Apache Camel is I, I can post you the, the link, uh, or you can look it up yeah. yourself. Sure, I'll grab it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Apache Camel is uh, an integration framework for in Java. So uh, in in Red Hat some of you might know, you know, uh, Red Hat has been acquired by IBM a couple of years ago. And we've been left, uh, we've been left alone, which is nice, you know, so I, I still talk about Red Hat instead of IBM in case you wonder. Uh, and uh, in, in Red Hat, we have, we have not only the operating system, uh, RHEL, but we also have various uh, layers on top of that, um, and one of them is the Fuse integration layer, and which is heavily used around the globe uh, and integrates heterogeneous systems uh, with Java. So if you if you have an endpoint or if you have a system and you want to connect it to another system, um, there is you know there's well-known integration patterns you can do this but basically it it boils down to a transforming stuff routing stuff you know consuming uh information consuming data in one format and then transforming it and routing it and then pushing it to another endpoint and and we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of of uh, possible connectors into this integration platform. So if you have a system, um, there's a very good chance that we have a connector for it. So, you know, all the databases, all the messaging systems, the uh, LinkedIn and, and whatnot, right? And uh, my task would be, or, you know, or my chosen task would be uh, to use the uh, identity stuff in connection with these uh, endpoints. So hopefully uh, in the future, uh, Apache Camel will be DITCOM enabled and we would be able to send, you know, arbitrary payloads could be authenticated and secured uh, through the DITCOM technology. At least that's the goal, right? Because because most of our customers, um, you know, they, they send non-trivial information across these endpoints. And for them, it would be very beneficial if we could use uh, a common standard to, uh, to secure and authenticate. And, you know, I mean, you know better than I what DITCOM can do, but uh, to have this as, an, as, a, as a, a layer available to all sorts of endpoints uh, at at Camel. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Um, I think from two thousand four to twenty ten, I, I I I was involved in like a Java based uh, enterprise framework that was essentially taking a bunch of different research projects uh, and trying to integrate them in 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 a way that uh, made it so that you know they could leverage each other. Um, and, and then um, more recently, just uh, I don't know if you've seen the talks by Daniel Hardman, uh, and I think Sam Kern has, has echoed them uh, in some of his talks, but essentially they talk about uh, or they compare, especially in, uh, when Daniel met with the W3C uh, about DIDCOM, he, he compared kind of uh, API uh, endpoints versus like a DIDCOM um, uh, did come uh, architecture that uh, you know avoids kind of the siloing that that makes it so that those things uh, can't uh, integrate as well. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen that talk, um, but I think you would find it interesting. I, I've seen a couple of talks. Um, maybe I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll find the me, link and I'll post it. Let me let me. So that's me. Hi. <laughs> So and and uh, this is the you know if if you like to know more about integration I'm not sure if you can see it yeah it's a it's a big book about how to do integration 
in, a, in an abstract way. Can you see it? It, it, it reads, it's trying to blur it because it's uh, not your face. <laughs> it's not my face. Yeah. So uh, now, oh, now there it's we my go. face. Yeah. yeah. Well done. So, <laughs> so now it's my face, and it's enterprise integration patterns, and it's got lots, lots of, lots and lots of, of these patterns, well researched, yeah. and and Apache Camel is an implementation of this book, if you like, right? So yeah. So and and Didcom is not part of the book. Right, but it should be, I think. <laughs> and so this is what this is about. Yeah, thanks. And Thomas, one, one question is, and what, what was you integrated with ADIS? Is with one framework of ADIS? What was yeah. the integration that you mentioned at the beginning? Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, so taking baby steps into the space, uh, I, I started off with what I know and I know you know, I know the application server and I know Camel and I didn't know, um, I didn't know SSI and didn't know Apache Aries, the, the Python, yeah, Akapai. So this is what I started off with, right? So I I used what is already available. So the uh, there's a there's a Java client library for Akapai and I integrated that with Camel, right? So, so but, but of course you can only go so far you know with this approach and and camel would then have a dependency on a on a akapai installation and well it goes some way but it doesn't go all the way that i want it to go right so ultimately i I'd, I'd like camel to be a, a full um, ssi agent implemented in java probably right and and i would short circuit uh i would like to short circuit what is already you know um becoming somewhat of a baggage and and focus on focus on didcom alone right so so this is why i'm interested in in the aip3 spec and then didcom Right, so so I have not much interest in in implementing all these various protocols that are already out there, right? Uh, because my resources are limited, or our resources are limited, and and the focus would be on on DITCOM v2 and AI, AIP 3.0, at least for this year, and see how it goes, right? See how it goes. Um, and I'm also not planning to write everything from scratch because there are various uh, libraries already available. There is, a, uh, I think from SIGPA, there's a library that, that can handle um, uh, DITCOM v2 messages in Kotlin, which is essentially Java. And there is a very good framework from Vault ID. You, you probably know it. And it, it does all sorts of, you know, did handling, wallet management, uh, key storage kind of thing, right? So, so I use those, right? I I use those, and and hopefully, uh, I can, I can, you know, provide the additional bits to, well, uh, to essentially send out and receive did come be two messages, and hopefully plug this in into the uh, AIP 3.0 test suite over the year. Yeah, that is, um, it's, uh, yeah, uh, just the impact of that, I feel like, uh, you know, I can't even wrap my, my mind around <laughs> how, how impactful it would be to uh, kind of enhance that ecosystem that, that that you're talking about uh that's and and you know a community that i haven't been involved in in, in quite a while but uh you know obviously is uh, massive uh you know globally yeah just imagine you know one of our biggest customers is shiphol airport in in amsterdam right so they for their entire it operation they use camel heavily right so so this would this would instantly enable them uh, at the airport to use Ditcom to, you know, do all sorts of interesting stuff on on top of what they already do. Absolutely, very cool. Well, glad to have you, and thank you for uh, introducing that. Uh, it'll give me some additional things to kind of think about as I'm thinking about Ditcom and 
uh, I actually can't wait to kind of revisit uh, Daniel's uh, talk here. I've probably listened to it four or five times and, you know, again now re-interested in, in listening to it and thinking about it. So, yeah, thank you, Tom. It's glad to have you. Um, also, just uh, I, I, I don't know if you know uh, Hakan and Judith, uh, they're doing a bunch of the Didcom V2 integration work into Akapai. So mm -hmm. they uh, have traditionally attended this these meetings uh, and Hakan can't make it, uh, he said this week, but he's planning to attend next week. So since you've been Akapai related, then uh, I would ha have you come across him? Possibly. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. But yeah. you know, I I kept uh um you know I kept a low profile because I'm so new to the space, right? So I I didn't dare to <laughs> raise my head too high, right? So but now I feel more comfortable and and so I'm I'm happy to work with all of you guys. Yeah, perfect. We are all new, so they all Yeah, yeah. it feels like it. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm responding to a post uh, by Riley Hughes um, from Trinsic, and in his post he says uh, a relatively new identity, uh, you know, person or something like that, uh, you know, having been here for five years, and I'm like, <laughs> if that's a relatively new uh, person, what does that make? Uh, you know, that for five years in this identity space has got to put him in, uh, you know. There's maybe only 30 people on the planet who could say the same thing, maybe. So anyways, I, I don't know. It's, uh, I guess identity, uh, it depends on how you define it, but uh, I'd say five years would be a massive amount of time. And then even yeah. one year at this point, uh, you know, somebody like me who's been around it for a year, uh, you know, I've, I, I'm fairly far along, I guess. So yeah, do, glad do you to work, have you. Do you work on this? Um wallet uh with with money from catalyst with cardano yes yeah you do? absolutely yeah yeah so so you might recognize this right yeah is that world mobile yes yeah. absolutely yeah i talked to them a ton at consensus 2022 yeah yeah good, good. yeah are you you're involved with them or did i miss that while you were talking uh, well no you didn't you didn't uh, i did this as a hobby you know uh, okay. Yeah, a year ago. So, so I know about. I, I, I was on the first. Um, what was it? Uh, Pioneer program. The yes. So yeah, you yeah. were with Rodolfo and I then, because that was uh, we're talking uh, at the the end of 2021. Yeah. So, so th this is not the uh, the SSI uh, Pioneer program, but the, the oh Haskell. okay the, yeah the oh the, okay uh, yeah okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Wow, that's wild. Uh, well, now we're now we're super connected. Uh, this yeah. is uh, it's like you've brought my past and the the present and uh, you know all together. So yeah. mm -hmm. very good. Well, it's super to meet you. And uh, yeah, I'd actually then you know would love to connect with you. You know, outside of here as well, and and just get to know you more. Great. And 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 uh, you know, go World Mobile. By the way, uh, fantastic. Uh, okay, so uh, let's um, do some catch up uh, really quickly with everybody else as well. Uh, maybe Bruce or Rodolfo. Uh, is there a, anything you'd like to uh, kind of catch us up on since uh, it's been a while since we met, December nineteenth, I think. Uh, nothing new. Just happy New Year to everybody. <laughs> That's. <laughs> What we been doing last days? Yeah, yeah no, no catch ups, but yeah. Uh, we, we yeah should... uh, Roto's being a little modest, I think. Uh, so, so uh, you know, it, we're both Roots ID guys. Uh, we've been doing a ton of work um, with Roots Wallet, which is a Didcom V two based uh, uh, identity wallet, um, and uh, some of our customers that are Didcom V two um, related. Uh, so tons of work going on there. Um, you know, we had a break too. So I guess, you know, maybe we haven't seen, a, a, you know, as much movement as we normally would see in a month, which feels like an, a, a month is a year for us in terms of uh, the amount that we do. But um, yeah, I mean, certainly, uh, let's see. Do we have any, Roto, is there any uh, like near-term stuff that we 
want to say other than yeah just mostly i guess we're, we're doing a, a ton of uh implementation work uh with didcom v2 and trying to also just consider uh interoperability uh opportunities um i don't know if everybody saw but iaw uh, the internet identity uh workshop meets uh, every six months and uh bruce we met there right this this last yes. uh, november so that was totally cool, but um, it was really neat to um, show uh, some interop uh, with the JFF challenge. And um, then uh, like there was like a hackathon that I missed. Uh, I would have loved to have attended it, but I think the Varamo guys kind of said, hey, let's uh, do a quick, let's see if we can make Didcom V2 uh, agents talk to each other and things like that. Um, uh, which was not super successful, but uh, at the same time, it's successful in the sense that you know you kind of you kind of find the pain points and learn from that. Uh, and then uh, also just related to all that, uh, you can see here we were listing AIP three. AIP AIP three is going to be Didcom V two um, heavily focused, uh, and as part of that, we are doing some work with the Aries agent test harness, where we want to kind of grow. Um, the tests related to Didcom V2 and AIP 3.0, whatever that, you know, ends up settling in as. Um, I'm sure we're going to talk about that a ton on Wednesday at the Aries meeting. Um, but yeah, we'd, we'd like to show a, a, a wider uh, set of tests and get those tests um, kind of... Uh, graduate those tests to interoperability uh, level for, for the Aries community. So... Yeah, ton, tons going on on our side. How about you, Bruce? <clears throat> uh, Happy New Year uh, to everyone. Nice to meet you, Thomas. Welcome. Um, since I'm helping uh, Phil Windley supervise some students who are working on Didcom V2, they had a very long break, and we're going to meet with them again, uh, perhaps as early as tomorrow, to see what uh, to see if they did anything. Yeah, sure. A vacation break. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, nothing to report there. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's um let's talk about AIP three. Uh, well, I guess I should ask: Is uh, are there topics that 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 we should discuss today? Um, I, I was essentially going to just kind of mostly catch us up with each other and talk about AIP three, uh, and then um uh kind of you know set a plan for you know what what the, this group would like to achieve uh over the next we'll say you know to next meeting and then over maybe the next month so any any topics in particular okay the aip3 <laughs> that's yeah aip3 that's the big one okay good uh let's see go to link open new tab Okay, so this loads and I, okay. So the, uh, yeah, Aries Interop Profile 3 um, as proposed, uh, this thing has been evolving uh, a bit. Essentially, I you know, not to take uh, too much credit, but this group essentially prompted uh, this AIP3 movement uh, in the sense that we wanna see Didcom V2 uh, adopted more across Aries. That's why we started this working group and you know it, it kind of grew into this. Initially, it was just a thread uh, on Discord. Um, but then that prompts the the idea that, okay, if, if Didcom V2 is going to be this kind of main communication uh, layer, obviously Didcom V1 had uh, quite a bit of adoption, but now how do we get more of the agents moving towards Didcom V2. So then naturally Hakan and Judith and all the work they're doing with Akapai uh, comes into scope uh, because we wanna see Akapai have uh, Didcom V2 um, support. And then uh, Roto and I have spent a bunch of time in the AFJ meeting. So that's Aries Framework JavaScript. Uh, and they are in the middle of a big uh, pull request with the SIGPA uh, folks for integrating Didcom V2 there uh, as well. And then Rodolfo is um, very involved uh, in the Didcom user group uh, and spec group um, to uh, essentially, yeah, see Didcom v2 uh, grow uh, and mature. 
Uh, and so here we are. Uh, we're, we're with Aries trying to create this interop profile that will will uh, acknowledge Didcom v2 as as kind of an important piece of interop across Aries. And so um, this list initially we had discussed. Um, this kind of brings us up to to today. I think is that. Uh, we started discussing kind of well, what are the base requirements um, that we need, and and anybody feel free to jump in if if you have uh, questions or or, or if I've, I'm missing something. But uh, obviously, the spec, the Didcom v2 spec, uh, is is going to be a, a base requirement. Uh, and then you know, kind of what are these other pieces uh, that we should include? And at some point in our last meeting, I think um, we were even questioning whether um, the if if we have these sub pieces uh like mediation and indie credentials and ld credentials and and so you kind of consider these these optional things that you can put on top that maybe uh you give guidance to the rest of the aries community of okay if you you know if you want to support let's say chat or you want to support ld credentials here's kind of the common well-tread path you know, to go to 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 do that, we kind of started to question. Scrolling back up here, we we kind of started to question. Well, should credentials uh, like Wacky Pex uh, should should this be a base requirement or something that you know is kind of an optional path? Uh, and that that ended up being a little bit funny for me because I questioned that in in the Aries meeting. And the Currens, we'll say Stephen and and Sam Curran, uh, not brothers, not not related. Um, they 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 kind of paused when I said, you know, oh, can we make this an optional path? And I I had to kind of revisit the mission of Aries to realize it is very credential focused, right? So for Aries to create an interop profile that has um, you know credential exchange. Uh, and 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 uh, proof presentation to have that be something considered to be optional kind of doesn't make sense in in the context of Aries and so that's good you know for me to have that realization and kind of fall back and and say uh, okay if we're the Aries Didcom v2 gr uh, group and and you know we want to see AIP 3.0 expand and grow and, and flourish within the Aries ecosystem, well, then obviously uh, we're going to, to have issue credential uh, and present proof be a part of the base requirements. Any thoughts on that, comments? Yeah, I, I would like to comment. So <laughs> how shall I start? So it, it, it may be spectacularly misguided to take these out, right? Uh, but at the same time, if we talk about uh, VC, um, then you know that automatically makes makes sense or has a strong connection to the way um, Akapai does or Aries does verifiable credentials, right? So VC alone is is not enough, right? To to say we we want to have in the abstract way we want to have verifiable credentials because there exist various standards to do this, right? So it, if we if we define uh, an interoperability profile, uh, this would largely mean if interoperability within the Aries uh, within the Hyperledger uh, community, right? But if we take this larger, right, and if we take it really large, right, uh, then self-sovereign identity only makes sense if it's globally available across all sorts of. Uh, ecosystems that exists, right? So so we have with uh, Didcom v2, we, we have a fantastic standards that can possibly bridge that gap because it is likely to, or it may be likely to uh, to get adopted in the uh, W3C uh, group, right? And, and more and more folks will, will focus on this, right? And and then we see is, is a layer on top, right? So, so what I would very, much like to see is is the level of interoperability uh, that covers the basics of what is absolutely necessary uh, for DITCOM v2 communication. Yeah, perhaps abstracting the idea of of 
how we do verifiable credentials and there are various ways of doing so and and there's an in areas particular uh, specific way and there's also from what i've seen so far there's a there's another way of, of doing this which walt id is using right and and they would not be interoperable with each other right so so there is work to be done uh to define specs and standards that uh that have the sovereign network uh talk to the to the european network right and and what i would would like to see is is a is a foundation for this work to happen right so so that that it's low hanging fruit even for for folks who are not uh, associated with Hyperledger to come up with an agent or come up with some sort of infrastructure which is interoperable, right? And it, if 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 that's the case, it would initially at least uh, exclude verifiable credentials. Yeah. So I I it, during those discussions, I, I I love everything that you said. I do think there are. There's some interesting uh, points of view, and and I think they, I think they carry a lot of of weight. Is that if we if we're not specific at all, then essentially the DIDCOM v2 spec itself is kind of what you're talking about in terms of a generic interoperability uh, of communication, um, and. Hyperledger right now has quite a bit of effort going on to work its way away from like a like sovereign based indie based um, ledgers and to work its way uh, it's working away from uh, a non creds specific uh, uh, credentials right so they uh, the the a non cred spec, for instance, has uh, kind of moved up out of uh, kind of the indie Aries uh, umbrella and now is its own um, level within Hyperledger, uh, and they even kind of had moved out of Hyperledger only to come back uh, because you know you need some foundation right to to uh, some community to to develop these things. Uh, but all that to say is I do think that the Occupy and AFJ. Um, agents i can't speak for the other ones because i'm not as familiar with them but i think they're trying to be ledger agnostic and i think that they're trying to be uh, credential format agnostic um but uh, so i think that you can still be focused on the ability to transact verifiable credentials uh as part of identity without you kind of the the legacy that that used to exist where Indy was you know very tightly bound to Indy creds and uh, 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 essentially yeah Indy ledger um it, so uh it, in light of that when when we've kind of pulled back more and more generic uh which I feel like you were kind of doing there uh Thomas I think that Sam and them have kind of said well that's that's what the did come like user group and the didcom spec folks with diff that's their focus is kind of you know okay you know didcom doesn't even need uh credential exchange uh and in fact bruce uh part of uh his use case is what had prompted us because i think in his use case uh credential exchange was not uh the focus uh for for their work uh and so that's where we started to question you know do we do we should we even uh, define that as part of AOP 3.0? But then uh, I feel like that then what I'm saying is takes you back to more of the diff didcom user group uh, and and spec group rather than the Aries group, which is focused on agents' ability to to um, pass credentials and and do all the things that you need to do with credentials. Thoughts on that? Yeah. That well, there would be still there would still be a gap, right? So of course the DITCOM v2 spec defines all this, but but what you have uh, in your first line, trust ping out of band, you know, discovery routing, this is a very good list, right? Maybe if 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 the the lowest level of interoperability would also define the various DIT methods that need to be supported, right? So so you would have you would have DIT key, for example, as as the minimum requirement, right? You would have you would have to have or did band. peer yeah or did peer right but, yeah but I, but I read up on did peer and and you know 
it, it seems that folks are already moving away from that, right? So I'm not here to judge this. I, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, sure. Really, yeah. really no, I have these no are idea. Good. These yeah, are good. I, I have no idea what, what is the right path to do, but but what I'm fairly sure about is if if you take the DIT uh, the DIT can be two spec and and then you have you know trust out of band is very important you know to make first contact so out of band needs to be well defined in this interoperability uh, profile uh, then the did methods that you know need to be involved need to be defined you know so so for folks to get started right and and then if, if you have those two right you have the foundation for a meaningful uh, did come be two message exchange right and and uh, then you know, for me, the story would already end um, if if you can do plain text signed and encrypted uh, did come be two messages, right? So so you make first contact, you know what what did methods to use, and and you can meet in a meaningful way exchange these methods, right? And and then you have uh, feature recover uh, discovery and routing, and that is also very important, right? So so for me, this this would already be uh, a very nice bundle right which would have some attractiveness to to folks outside of the hyperledger community so they can say oh well you know uh, with this inside we can be interoperable and get the check mark right so so we have we have basic basic level aip uh, 3.0 interoperability Right, so so we can make first contact. We know what did methods to use, and we can say these three types of messages across. Right, and and this in itself, I would say, has tremendous value. And then we haven't even talked about verifiable credentials. Yeah, you're very much echoing what what we talked about on the nineteenth. Bruce or or Roto, are you are you guys interested in uh, you know hopping in <coughs> just? Uh... Lance, I, I have an area of ignorance that you can perhaps fill in, which is that... Um, or at least Rodolfo can. <laughs> I'll try to. <laughs> there, there, are, there are several uh, uh, VC uh, things in the, in the optional parts. And, and then there is this Waki PEX, which is required. Why is it special? Why is it the one that is that of all the VC methods, why well, is this actually one the, chosen? I think that the Waki PEX is more agnostic to the VC type. So it's just a protocol to exchange credentials. And then you have different options to how you understand or you interpret the credential. But that's just the oh, protocol okay. to, to exchange it and present it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That helps. And 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 then so uh, would it be the case that to be AIP three you would have to meet all the base requirements and at least one of the actual VC formats? Yeah, you should. I think yeah, <laughs> because if not, you just share something that the other party cannot understand, right? Okay, so I I guess that's self evident, but I think it would be good to call it out in the in the AIP three. Yeah. So, um, and Wacky Pex is l literally considered an interop profile, which is which is uh, interesting. And so, um, the Aries community, if if the Aries community is focused on verifiable credentials, then truly uh, AIP 3.0 is really trying to get to Wacky Pex. Uh, uh, which I think now they call Wacky Didcom. I think Wacky Pex is uh, kind of the older name, but um, and interestingly, in in JFF, the JFF challenge, um, they took shortcuts uh, with the Wacky Pex uh, uh, interop profile because they wanted to show uh, interoperability, but without having to implement everything that Wacky Pex or, or Wacky Didcom uh, 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 requires, uh, because it's quite, uh, what? It's quite a rich, <laughs> it's quite a rich definition in that in order to capture kind of the, the ideal, uh, set of uh, uh, the ideal protocol that you would go through in order to do uh, a, a credential 
uh, issuance and acceptance and all these things. Um, so that that is another thing that that, that you know literally prompted this group was okay could could we even have like the simple path for for uh, wacky didcom that's kind of this subset of, of that spec uh, and so yeah i think this discussion is 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 reminding me of all these things which is really good uh, you know that's the good way to to launch here in 2023 and um yeah, I don't I I I feel I agree with everything everyone's saying in terms of uh just, you know, how how far to go uh in terms of Aries and and I totally agree that it it would be incredibly useful without even verifiable credentials to have kind of this interop profile and ha is that something that maybe should even be defined in diff which is like a like a a non-verifiable credential focused um, uh, interop profile that includes uh, that doesn't include uh, wacky didcom, but does include uh, kind of these base features, discovery, and oh, here's a did method that everybody should 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 support. But by the way, you know, like Thomas says, did peer is uh, the most useful and yet probably you know gonna see transition uh, in the future so yeah a any thoughts on all that stuff which way are are we going away from as we move away from did peers what is the what is the next uh... yeah we've um we've only heard rumors uh, and kind of I don't want to call them rumblings, but uh, comments by people like Daniel Hardman, that um, and 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 people like Sam Smith from the Kerry side oh, of, Kerry. of things. It, essentially, I think that I I want to say that the kind of underlying thought is that did peer for one thing. Uh, I think it has three kind of variants, uh, but only two of the three are ever used, and one of those two is essentially did key so really there's yes. only one there's only one uh portion of did peer that is the one that everybody uses right uh because otherwise they're either using did key or not implementing the the kind of again idealistic exhaustive uh you know spec of of did peer and so but even that, I think Daniel is conceding that it's not minimally sufficient, but I don't really know the details on that. Sam Smith talks a lot about like these minimally sufficient uh, layers, these minimal sufficient implementations. And there is quite a bit of movement for Daniel Hardman, I, I believe, you know, with the carry ecosystem. And so uh, these, these AIDs, they call them in carry, um, are are going to influence, I think, uh, where where did peer might go in the future. So we don't know what that is. Uh, maybe Roto, if you have any thoughts on that. Um, no, but... so, so I'll say that this is not for now. So we are talking yeah. in the future. So that's going to yeah. be AIP five seven whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah don't, don't worry about that now. <laughs> That's the but right comment. What, what we mentioned on, on the Edis call as well is uh, regarding the peer is that we may add on, on that. The, the idea is to change that that uh, RFP, uh, RFC, and maybe have did it peer this, uh, uh, the, the part of, of that, that is interesting to us, but also maybe add did it web or something simpler to implement. So uh, in order to show interoperability. So having another simple method that anybody can can implement easily, don't require maybe libraries because this, this web is so simple that can can be implemented and, and added also as an option. And and Roto uh, Thomas mentioned did key. And, uh, you know, I'm not as uh, good at explaining all of this, but essentially did key doesn't have a did document associated with it. Right. And so did peer they, they, is, is they why have a, they, they can have it. They have a did document, but also have the, the keys, actually the, the, the keys, the key, the only one key. 
on the key. So, oh, so uh, you don't have yeah. the import. Yeah, the, the, you don't can put the service endpoint, and in this communication, the same service endpoint is is really interesting. So you you can use it, but you need another way to uh, share the endpoint to the other party. Right. So, and the idea is having one document that can explain everything. So just receiving one DID, you can uh, discover everything on on the on the document. So that's why did key doesn't fit really well with that. And did it peer is the same, but adding this part of on the document. So yeah, good. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. So uh, yeah, the question is uh, so so I think. Um, I think it's okay for us to keep, well, are there any thoughts on if there was no base requirement for credentials, where, where do you think this is an uh, uh, interoperability profile that should live in BIF? or something like that, you know, oh, separate from AIP 3.0. But I, I guess where where should we be projecting this message that did if you well, if yeah. you remove the, the WACIPEX, you're gonna see you're gonna keep only did it come plus did it peer, right? And that's right. almost did it come. So I said you can plug right. did it come, yeah. you got it. So yeah. you don't need a, a, AIP or profile, it's just you comply with did it come be two or not. Yeah, and then uh, oh, we recommended peer, <laughs> right? <laughs> sure, fair enough. And, yeah. Anyway, for, for me, it's just it's more like political or not, but it's the same to having in the base or having a, a optional, right? But that's for me my point of view. Uh, I, I think there's a practical angle to this. So at the end of the day we would like to have some sort of test harness that can prove successful interoperability, right? With basic functionality, right? So, so the shortest route to, to that piece of software, right? The, that, that would be the value, right? So, yeah. so if we, if we can, if we can get this into, into Akapai or some other, some other agent, right? And if we can, if we can reuse uh, the existing Aries test suite, Right to uh, to implement that right so so that would be a success right so so and and a success that is reachable you know within let's say in the next six months would be massively beneficial right so so yeah. th th this consideration might even influence what we put here in the spec right so yeah. so we might want to have something that can you know for all intents and purposes uh, get done. In, in in the next six months, right? So we have it in a test suite, we have it implemented in at least one uh, um, uh, agent, right? Which is the reference implementation. And then we have a test suite that tests it. And then we have a bunch of other agents which can then run against the test suite and verify their intro successful interoperability at that level, right? Yeah, very good one, points. One nice, nice part of the test harness, I'm not an expert, but uh, is you, you're gonna also split that maybe the, the base requirements in different tests. So yes. you're gonna see you, you may not have a hundred percent of the base, but you're gonna pass DDCOM, you're gonna pass DDPR, you're gonna pass inside the DDCOM, you're gonna pass maybe the trust ping, discover features, and you won't pass the wacky packs, right? Yes. At least yes. you're gonna have a level, you can implement the same framework, and maybe you're gonna be not 100% yeah. on that, but you're going to see what are you interested in and you pass it and it's okay for us. Yes, of course. But but you already see that you mentioned a couple of things, right? And and these are the things that, that are important to you. And it would, would be nice to have one name for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, 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 <laughs> the, the, this is actually a really good point. I think, uh, you know, the, this alone will make this meeting so valuable. So you can use any tags that you want within the Aries agent test harness. So so each test has a has a tag to it, right? And and so some tests have AIP two on it. So a bunch of tests are going to have AIP three on it. But we could define as this group 
we could define a tag that's essentially uh, AIP3, but without verifiable credentials, right? And we could come exactly. up with our own name for that. Exactly, exactly. So and maybe we call it something like Didcom V2 minimalist or something like that. And then you could show like, oh, you know, I'm 100%, uh, you know, interoperable at the yes. Didcom V2 minimalist level yes. or or, yes. or maybe it's called, uh, yeah, simple path or something silver. like that. Right? You call yeah. it silver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bro. Or may maybe we just say yeah. Didcom V2 peer, right? To, yeah. to, to note that it's a peer did uh, and there could even be Didcom V2 web or something like that. Yeah. So, okay, I think that that is excellent. And and I'm about to do, uh, January is gonna be a lot of uh, Aries agent test harness work on my side, which will help me to come up to speed on this. But it also, this is a good opportunity for us to kind of define some new tags because um, when I started going through the Didcom V2 uh, related tests in the Aries agent test harness and I started reaching out and, you know, kind of like, why aren't agents being scored, you know, and they're mm -hmm. like, well, that's not interoperability. That's not an interoperability matter. And that's what agent, mm -hmm. Aries agent test harness is about. They're, they said, oh, maybe the profile you're talking about is like bleeding edge, right? That, that was kind mm -hmm. of the comment. Uh, and again, AIP 3.0 is supposed to kind of be that new bleeding edge thing. But yeah, we, there's no reason we can't have multiple... Uh, uh, new tags. Good. I'm going to, uh, let's see, note that. Uh, okay, other thoughts? I have something that's kind of um, tangential, but um, the, the students that I'm supervising, helping to supervise, really ought to be using the Aries agent test harness, <clears throat> but they haven't been able to figure out how to how to um, get their agent into play in the test harness. To whom can I uh, reach out for for help with that? What language uh, are they using? Pardon me? What language? What, what uh, they're they're doing it within Picos, and so they're not using any libraries other than Sigma. Oh, okay. Uh, did, well, I'm sorry, I was typing. Was your question uh, that uh, about integrating with the Aries Agent Test Harness? Yes, yes. They they've been able to use it to set up uh, set up configurations with um, with existing agents, but they don't know how to put their own into play. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so I, that is l literally the work that I'm going to be doing uh, oh, this month. Okay. So if if that's something that um, you would like, um, and maybe they could be on the Discord or or Aries uh, Didcom V2 Discord. Uh, or maybe we can find another way that we could communicate I, as okay. I'm going through it. I'm happy to uh, like collaborate with with them and and talk about it because essentially what I did uh, before the before the new year was I got to the point where I had created a new uh, agent definition, but underlying was just Akapai all over again. But I just wanted to show myself, right? How do I, mm -hmm. you know, set up the little pieces that that connect back into the Aries agent test harness so that I can, you know, say, okay, here's my new agent, uh, run the tests, you know, against my new agent and underlying was just Akapai. Now I want to pull that Akapai out and, you know, start to add in other, other agents. Um, so, if that's um, something that, you know, I can answer questions with them or, or you know, whatever, I think, um, um, let's see, do I have that somewhere they can see it? I'll, I'll make sure that whatever I'm working on is uh, available. Um, okay. you know, there, there, there's, a, there's a meeting, there's a bike. A meeting well, for monthly. the panel, right? It's a monthly, it's a monthly okay. meeting, yeah. And so um, uh, that, I mean, you can get some help there, but um, also there is a channel within Discord that um, is very helpful. Where do I go for that? Yeah, there's an Aries-Agent-Test-Harness. Uh, let me see if I can get a link to this thing. Uh, channel that um, people have responded to my questions in there before. Oh, great. That would be great. Thank you. 
I'll at least uh, I'll at least just type it into on the on the, it's on the on the Aries Discord. On that. Uh, yeah, on the Aries Discord, uh, uh, the Hyperledger yeah. Hyperledger uh, Foundation. Yeah, there's a, a channel called Aries Agent Test Harness like that. Uh, and so, yeah, they've been helpful. That's where I essentially started asking the questions like, hey, you know, how come when I look at uh, scores of agents, I don't see any of them getting scored based on their DIDCOM yes. V2, you know, uh, tests. And then they explained to me, you know, that's not interop yet because it's not part of a profile and so on and so forth. So that's literally how we've gotten here now. So, okay. Great. Thanks. I, 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 I paste so the link to the Discord. Yeah. I, I paste the link to the Discord. Oh, Thank you, Roto. That's very helpful. Yeah, welcome. And uh, yeah, if they and they're welcome to at me as well on Discord. Okay. Um, you know, uh, if you're in our Didcom V2 one, which uh, I assume you are, but I'm just looking. Have you yes, posted I, in there? I believe before? so. Okay. I, I think I've just lurked there, but. Fair enough. Yeah, as long as you have access, yeah, you'll see my post, so they can okay. they can at me. It's uh, yeah, my name's a little goofy, me Grimlance. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> so yes. Maybe maybe I should uh, you know, Telegram Sam. He's uh, he's you, you can um, think you can change the name, right? Or not? Yeah, for, yeah. Maybe I should. Maybe for, I should just call this guy. Yeah, for yeah. Essentially, it it boils down to implementing an a, a back channel. For, for the test suite. Yes. And there are various, you know, if, if you look at this, there, there are various, it's actually not that hard, right? So if, if you look at this, you pick your favorite language or your favorite, you know, if, if you if you can read Python, then the, the Python back channel is really easy to read. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and, yeah, and uh, just one more thing. One more sure. thing I have, um, if, you, if you look at this, Right, so so that link here, mm -hmm. th this is really just for my own uh, progress on 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 the test suite, and what you see here is is a is a markdown markdown tables, which can be generated with this command up here generated with right. Mm. So I th I thought I thought this is really useful. So I I extended the test suite thing with with that right. So it it generates if you like uh, a markdown language. And further down I have th the table for for two O. And you see hardly anything is done. But but it would be so useful if if you could have a similar command, tag, AIP, and then whatever we decide. Our attack should be, and and you get this instant markdown table, right? With with all the descriptions of what you need to do, and then you just work your way down, and and you have interoperability when the table has all you know check marks. That's exactly what we should shoot for. Yeah, perfect, yeah. Thomas. I appreciate you sending that. That's yeah. that's great. Let me post that in the. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, that's really great. Okay, that's our time. Uh, fantastic kickoff. Uh, you know, there's there's always the nerves that if you're just gonna kind of, uh, you know, reconnect, what's gonna happen? Uh, you know, is it is it gonna be a full meeting? And I think this was perfect. Uh, we hit the ground running, and uh, so I think, uh, yeah, obviously, Aries Agent Test Harness um, uh, work will be super important this month. Uh, and then, yeah, if you're able to attend the uh, other Aries meetings, uh, especially the working group meeting in uh, on Wednesdays, uh, obviously, we'll be talking much more about AIP 3.0, and it's so valuable because then we get Sam uh, and his feedback, as well as in the DIDCOM uh, user group and, and working group meetings, which t Rodolfo, is today the day that Daniel Harmon's going to talk? Um, yeah, today. Uh, yeah. He's talking about um, something really important that's skipping my mind. No, no, it's for for the future also. <laughs> like trying to to integrate or to join with forces with the curry ecosystem. Yes. I think the yes. the web notes um, and looking into the future and see how everybody can collaborate and try to group everybody in some only one in the future one path. Right. So that should. Well, I, that should I, I don't know what's going to gonna be going on, but I, I think it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, is is that talk 
part of the Hyperledger uh, schedule as well, or is this somewhere it's else? Diff. No, it's diff. It's, yeah. Diff. Yeah, diff. Um, let me it see if I can. Her group. I know we're. Uh, okay, so that meeting is. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It's in five hours. Uh, so it's pretty late if you're in Europe. Um, that's kind of why we put this meeting earlier. Uh, and let's see, can I actually come up with a link for this? And hopefully this is the right one because I know that Daniel was posting which Zoom it's in. But anyways, if you get uh, yeah connected with the diff calendar, uh, you'll see it on there. So. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, great. All right. Awesome to have you, Thomas. Great to see you, Bruce and Roto. Oh, thank stuff. you, Lance. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.